Boston, a boom town on the U.S. East Coast. Cambridge is home to the nation's oldest and most renowned university, and Harvard is an academic mecca for the world's most talented people. I wanted to have walls where people could write on, all over the place. So you can write all over the place here. Because by writing, you can make pictures and ideas can come out uh, more naturally when you actually are painting. Federico Capasso was born in Rome and is one of the inventors of the quantum cascade laser. He began research on this project at the Bell Labs in 1984. The laser behaves like a waterfall, by an electron waterfall. By applying in vol a voltage, we inject the electrons into these thin layers. As the electron tumbles down, at every stage it uh, emits a laser photon. So if the laser has 100 stages, one electron will emit 100 laser photons. So this is the reason why the quantum cascade laser can be made to be very powerful. Professor Capasso is an advocate of brainstorming and works with his students and associates as peers. It is the team that also researches new applications for the quantum cascade laser. These instruments make it possible, for instance, to map exactly the distribution of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Recently, one of my colleagues at Harvard University has flown a quantum cascade laser for a period of four years in, in, in the actual atmosphere, housed in this plane here, and the plane went up from the south to the north, okay, along the latitude, and at different heights. So what it did, it measured altitude profile of, of many chemicals, and so uh, they were able to get a high precision map of these gases, and this is critically important to make a good prediction about climate change. A novel nanolaser as a high sensitivity detector for exhaust gases and chemical substances. It takes on particular significance in molecular spectroscopy. One of the potentially more revolutionary applications of QC laser will be in breath analysis. The idea here is to try to detect well in advance of other methods, you know, an incipient disease such as diabetics, ulcer, and so forth. That would be a further milestone in his research. Federico Capasso, a passionate Italian who has found his second homeland in the United States. These are my three uh, graces, my wife Paula, my daughter Luisa, and my other daughter Marta. And they're all cheerful and, and beautiful. And I she's waiting Martha. for the grandchildren. Wow. And I'm as I said, uh, I'm not so in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'll lose a bit of Paula, you know, you know it is. <laughs> the personal part of Federico, Federico is very warm person, but I like to have it only for myself, <laughs> for me and for the family. He loves reading and always has, and is particularly fond of poetry. You have to learn how to criticize the other. You can criticize me, you can criticize, be outspoken, inspired, and so there eventually, little at a time, you find your voice. But you can't find your voice if you're constantly in the admiration of a role model. You see, you need a role model, but at some point you need to detach yourself from a role model to find your own tune. And this is where, that's how I really feel. I, and I sit here at Harvard with my uh, students at the end of the class, you know, like I know uh, the students become quite aggressive. If they become aggressive, it's a success. If they start to ask me really hard questions, sometimes they get upset. They say, this is wrong. I said, I've succeeded. This is the beginning of a good scientist. <laughs>